Welcome or welcome back to this final day of the Eastern Regional Canadian Roller Derby Association, uh, Roller Derby Association of Canada, I suppose is the official name, the Dames of Thrones Tournament, and uh, we have gotten into the thick of things. I'm AK40 on here with Lightning Slim, and uh, Slim, let them know what we've got on store. Well, we're about to see what you would call the bronze medal game of this tournament. We've got the Renegade Derby Dames Misfit Militia, they will face the hosting team that is Royal City Roller Girls Brutleggers. Indeed, and it has been a journey to get here for both of them. The Brutleggers defeated the capital city Dolly Rogers yesterday, moved on, and were defeated by Forest City in a great game. So they are now in the third and fourth place game up against the Militia, who had a, a great coming out against the uh, GTAR G-Stars. yes. A dominant win over them, and then came just short in an amazing game against the Bay Street Bruisers from Toronto. The Brutleggers game against the Forest City Roller Girls was certainly a chippy affair. I think some of them may be nursing some injuries as a result of the extreme physical play of that bout yesterday. We'll see if that takes a toll this afternoon. Absolutely, and you know, a tournament like this is kind of a war of attrition, especially when you come in with you know 14 to 16 skaters, you go through a number of games, and these have been hard fought games. You know, the, even though that first game for the Militia was a bit of a blowout, they were just pushing themselves the entire time. And then to come back later and play just that back and forth emotional scrappy game against the Bruisers, that's got to take a toll on them too. Certainly, they have no idea coming in how the tournament is going to go. And from what I have seen in my experience in roller derby is that these ladies don't have an off switch. They will go as hard as they can in any competition that is presented to them. Absolutely. Well, as we see right now, the equipment is being checked and we are just about ready to get go with this penultimate game. And uh, the third place winners will of course be awarded a trophy. Unfortunately for them, they will not move on to the national championship tournament. The victors yesterday for the play into the championships, the Forest City All-Stars and the Bay Street Bruisers representing Toronto have gotten the, uh, the ins for champs. It will be a matter of seeding in the next game, but right now this one's for pride and for some shiny dragon eggs. Absolutely that in keeping with the Dames of Thrones theme we have going on this weekend. So you see on screen there, that's the Brutleggers in the, uh, the green jerseys with the uh, suspenders. They are having their, uh, their various uh, safety pads and helmets checked for fit and to make sure that any loose pieces of Velcro are uh, taped down properly to prevent injury. Now you see there, those are the uh, Renegade Derby Dames Misfit Militia in the camouflage, of course, and the white tops. That's right. Safety is first. This is, a, of course, a very aggressive sport, and uh, there's not a lot of safety equipment, but we want to make sure their joints are protected. So 
uh, not only with the Velcro, you want to make sure the caps are uh, on tight and uh, the helmets are there. Right there on your screen, you see the trophies. The big one standing right there is the Iron Throne. I guess it's the plastic throne in this case uh, on a... Uh, on a bed of skulls, the second place trophy is a sword thrust through a three-headed dragon, and the third place trophy is uh, the three golden eggs. So we will be presenting that after the championship tournament as well as the MVPs chosen by the teams and uh, by your humble announcers. That's right, so this particular game is for that clutch of dragon eggs, the uh, representing the third place prize in this tournament. That's right, and uh, a huge pride point for both of these teams. Uh, Guelph, of course, the hometown honeys in this case, want to represent. They have done a great job hosting this tournament. They have been wonderful hosts, and they have done very well thus far in the tournament. Uh, so, of course, the hometown crowd is here cheering them on, and the militia have been trying to make a case for themselves. Coming out only in 2011, last year, this is their first time on the big stage, and they have definitely made an impression thus far. Absolutely. They are here to impress. They have uh, succeeded in that, and uh, I think they'll be turning heads throughout the rest of this year and uh, seasons to come. The action now underway. You see there a slow rolling start. Now the jammers are released. That's You're looking at brass brawls jamming for Royal City and Randy Rowland, who's done some serious heavy lifting for the Renegades, but it is brass brawls in that lead jammer position. You see the referee with his green armband held high to correspond to that green sweater. She is in lead jammer position. That's right, and of course, for those of you who are newer to Derby, the jammers are the point scorers. Points are not scored on that first pass. As Slim just explained, lead jammer is awarded, and that is a strategic advantage where she can call it off right there. You see her touching her hips, and that will call it off. Points will be scored until the fourth whistle, though, and you see four points going up for the militia right there as their jammer, Randy Rollins, kept going. You want to keep going through that fourth whistle because you never know how many points you could pick up. Two points will go to the bootleggers on that one. And as I was saying, points are scored on the subsequent passes after the first pass, second, third, fourth, however many times they can get around. And they score points by passing opponent's hips. If they lap the opposing jammer, that is an additional point. If they get all five, we call that a grand slam. That's right, AK. That last jam, a two-point steal for the Misfit Militia as they did not have lead jammer status but picked up four points to two. Action underway again. The Hot Shamali jamming in the green for Royal City. And it is Zombabe jamming for the Misfit Militia, That's Hot right. Shamali. Hot Shamali is your lead jammer on the straightaway coming back around to the back of the pack. And again, for those newer viewers out there, roller derby is a very intense, of course, because of the physicality of it. But mentally, in the pack, you're playing offense and defense simultaneously as a group. Offense to help your jammer through and defense to stop the opposing jammer. Some strong defense right there, but Hachimale will pick up a pair of points. No points being scored for the Militia. And of course, there are penalties in this game as well. Uh, if you accrue four minor penalties for things like back blocking, cutting the track, low blocking, things like that, four of them will get you a minute in the penalty box or one major penalty, meaning it has some sort of impact that knocks a skater out of position, down or out of play. You will get a major for that as well. Thank you, A.K. Randy Rowland back on the jammer line for the Misfit Militia. A new jammer for Royal City. That is Hot Cross Guns, number 38. And you see right there the, the Brute Leggers taking a knee to start the jam, thus resulting in a no-pack to start things off. And the jammers are released upon a no-pack, whether it's at the beginning or it is a result of the pack splitting apart. Right there, lead jammer going to the Militia as the jammer hot cross guns for the bootleggers being held up and trying to fight her way through coming around the turn she gets through on the inside and she is out but not lead jammer as that honor has already been awarded to the militia jammer who flies around the outside untouched randy rollins will call it off and pick up four easy points and that is a four and O oh jam for the misfit militia pretty much textbook jamming you want some for me none for you and we begin again, of course, the clock not stopping between jams in Roller Derby. It will continue to tick down. There are two 30-minute halves to the proceedings. Looks like Royal City is going to attempt taking a knee, and the Misfit oh. Militia will follow suit. 
Little switch right there. Now you see one player's in the box for the Brute Leggers right now. Misfit Militia with a four on three pack advantage. Wanted to get things going because they do have an extra skater in their favor. Now the pack is defined. Oh, and a major back block. So we will have a power jam. That means the jammer for the Brute Leggers will be sitting for one minute of penalty time. And now the Militia can just focus on offense and score unopposed. Of course, they do have to deal with the blockers. Now what we're seeing right here is pack play strategy. The pack is consistent of the most blockers from both teams within 10 feet of each other. Now, when one team slows down to the outside, what they're trying to do is get the pack to split naturally. When the Brute Leggers are engaging the jammer for the militia, they will move past that 10 foot, their no pack will be called, and when there is no pack, no one can engage. If they do, they will pick up, most often cases, a major penalty for engaging the jammer with a no pack situation. Looks like Royal City in penalty trouble now. Farrell Merrill taking a seat in the penalty area next to the Hellcat of Pinar, who is, of course, Royal City's jammer. This is Carrie DeWay now skating for the Misfit Militia. She approaches the pack there. She is on a power jam. She is trying to put up as many points as possible and rack up a lead against Royal City. Put out in the center there. Lady Gorgeous throwing a hit on her, but Lady Gorgeous going out of bounds in doing so. Carried away is permitted to skate on. That's right. Carried away right there. Cutting a skater up front, but that skater was out of play. So she is nullified. If a skater goes out of play, down or out of bounds, and the jammer comes in or anybody comes in ahead of them, they're nullified for cutting the track penalties. That means there is no penalty, but she does not get the point for that skater. Right there you see Carried away calling it off. See how many points she picked up in the pack. She does pick up two points, one for the blocker on the track that she passed and one for the skater in the box. It's not just about the shorts. It's about inspiring others. It's about having fun and making new friends. It's about getting hit down and getting back up again. It's about being a team. Pivot Star. It's about roller derby. And we here at Canuck Derby TV would like to thank, with all our hearts, those folks over at Delta Hotels and Resorts here in Guelph, Ontario for putting us up this weekend and for putting up with us and our crew. For a great stay, visit Delta Hotels and Resorts at www.deltahotels.com. Right here we have Professor Rex, the bench coach for the Brute Leggers, in there talking to the referees, reviewing some things. Often cases uh, they can review for... Uh, penalties, and a lot of times you're not going to get a penalty overturned, especially a contact penalty if it's something procedural that might happen. Uh, but a lot of times it's a, an instance of they don't think the score was correct. Certainly just a discussion there. Ref and Adora Bell sending uh, Professor Rex back to his bench, perhaps unsatisfied but enlightened. All right, we've got a 4-3 start right here in favor of the Militia. And Zombe will sneak through on the inside on a scrum start. P quick lead jammer for number 26 in the white. Right there, making her way around the track. She had a dominant performance yesterday in the first game. Second game, she was a little bit shut down, but she can be a serious threat. Right there, weaving her way inside to the outside, out around, and she will call it off as she passes the last blocker, picks up four points, and you see the ease with which she just cut through that pack. She's got great speed and great agility. And that was certainly excellent track awareness also as she cut through the pack and then called it off before Brass Brawls, the jammer for Royal City, could make her way into the pack itself. If you're watching on Canuck Derby TV, we invite you to use the chat pane to the right-hand side of your screen and tell us how we're doing. You can pose questions if you like. We, of course, will be concentrating on the action, but we'd like to see you there. That's right, and the action on the track right now started right away with a no-pack start for the Militia. Even strength at the beginning of this jam. And we've got Randy Rowland picking up lead jammer and Hot Shamale right now being held up in the back of the pack. Randy Rowland doing the lion's share of the jamming in the second bout. She was kind of the secondary jamming in the first game that the Militia played, uh, whereas Zombabe did a lot more of the scoring. They switched it up in the second game. Uh, interesting strategy. Uh, they did not win, but uh, it did work for them because I think the other team was uh, a heavy hit there by Forza of Royal City knocks down Randy Rowland and she decides having scored a couple of points it was uh, time to call off the jam.
A look there at one of our non-skating officials, timekeeping. Jam timer, very important uh, position right there, and we have an official timeout. As denoted by the jam timer doing the touching the shoulders, uh, kind of looks like he's flexing a little bit there. We're going to let the officials confer. We'd like to thank our good friends at Rollerbug.com. Founded in 2005 and Derby owned and operated, Rollerbug was one of Canada's first roller skate shops. Located in Toronto but found worldwide at www.rollerbug.com. You can use the coupon code THRONE for 15% off your next purchase. T-H-R-O-N-E, Rollerbug.com. And a slow rolling start right now. And when there is a no pack, the jammers are released. And typically when there is a pack, they will be released when the pack crosses the pivot line. Right now we've got Mad Max number 420 being held up, knocked around a little bit. Goes to the outside and throws a hit in the hot cross guns who sneaks through on the inside and picks up lead jammer for the brute leggers. Mad Max working her way out on her initial pass as well, getting some speed away from the pack. And they're jockeying for position, and there's Hot Cross Gun slams a shoulder into a blocker, does a little bit of her own clearing right there, gets through and calls it off, and a major penalty being called right at the end of that jam on the Militia, so they will be two blockers short in this next jam. That was Terry Baum, number 413. She will take a seat for one minute. Both teams deciding to crowd the jammer line. They've moved themselves back away from that initial pivot line because they want to form a wall in front of the respective jammers and to see which one can wriggle their way through. We call that a rugby or a scrum start. The Hellcat of Pinar, you see her there. She was almost through but took a hit and is pulled backwards. She is forced to re-enter the track behind her opponent. Meanwhile, Zombabe is through. She has gained lead jammer status. You see her there at the top of the screen. There she goes. No lead jammer right there, minor track cut on Zombabe, and to attain lead jammer, oh, huge hit on the turn right there. Wow, some strong defense coming from the Militia, and only two blockers out there against four, and right now they're looking dominant against the Hellcat of Pinar. Zombabe was out first, but did not gain lead jammer status. She is scoring points, but the Hellcat of Pinar has finally emerged fairly from the pack and has lead jammer status. She comes around again and approaches the pack. Zombabe trying to sneak through on that inside line, tried to jump up but got tripped up, ended up in the infield and had to fall back. Another massive hit right there from Rennie Rumble. <laughs> wow, she just slammed into her, but you look at the resiliency on Hellcat who's being hit and hit and hit. Nice machine gun hitting right there. Rapid fire from the militia blockers. They are waterfalling in Hellcat's general direction, throwing hit after hit. Uh, maybe a little too much from Rennie Rumble. She just headed to the penalty box. That's right. Hellcat of Pinar getting slammed right now. Another big takedown. And yesterday she caught quite a bit of abuse as a primary jammer for the Brute Lakers. Again, another great hip check right there from number 28. That's Damon Starr, who has really been a force in the pack for the militia. Pack slowed down right now, and it looks like we've got a jammer headed off to the box. It's going to be Zombabe with a major low block going to the box. So we've got a power jam right now for the Brute Leggers. Down by 19 points and a great opportunity to put some on the board. Getting ready to line up right now, looking over at the penalty box. I see white, white, white in there. Two blockers and the jammer, and we have a timeout for the Brute Leggers. Guelph will take a second to assess the situation, and as we just said, with a, uh, a close game like this, 31 to 12, with about 11 minutes gone in the first half, they have an opportunity here, Slim, to, to really close that gap and possibly even take a lead. That's right, AK, and it looks like here at the center of the track, Professor Rex and uh, the Hellcat of Pinar having a chat with the refs. Meanwhile, you see there on the track, Dr. Ninja, also one of the coaches for Royal City. He's having a discussion with his lineup on the track there. And as you said, AK, opportunities to be had. 
the score not so far apart plenty of time remaining just under 19 minutes and uh, Royal City no doubt looking for a way to gain the lead here If you're interested in picking up some excellent roller derby gear, we recommend you visit our friends at rollerbug.com. And if you're watching this tournament, you can have a 15% discount off your next purchase. Use the coupon code THRONE, that's T-H-R-O-N-E. Put in the coupon code at rollerbug.com. All right, a review of an illegal block going on right there. Looks like the referees have figured things out and we are ready to go. All right, you see Royal City lining up on that inside line, down on a knee. No pack called, and the jammer is released. And now the shift to the outside opens up the hole. Only two blockers to contend with, and they do it nicely, do the Royal City Roller Girls. That's Brass Brawls skating for Royal City in the lead jammer position. You see her approach the pack there. She tries to go outside of her conga line to thread the needle there, but she is struck down. That was an excellent hit there by Bayonet Betty. And five points, a grand slam on the power jam right now for the Royal City girls. Capitalizing, not necessarily as quickly as they'd hoped probably, and another great hip check from the militia. That was Rennie Rumble. And Ren they've got her number on the lines right there. Another great hit to the inside right there. And she is gonna call it off a little bit frustrated perhaps, and uh, maybe a little bruised. That's right, she will take four more points on that one, so Nine points total on that jam, and that is a substantial power jam right now, cutting the lead now to 10. It is substantial, AK, but I think they were hoping for more, but certainly frustrated by the tenacious defense of the Misfit Militia. Bayonet Betty and Rennie Rumble. Rennie Rumble has had a tremendous tournament, by the way, blocking and even doing a little bit of jamming on the side, and she threw a huge hip check into brass brawls that bought her, brought an abrupt end to that power jam. That's right, and an abrupt beginning to this jam with another knee start, still a four on two in favor of the Brute Leggers, and they will pick up lead jam. Great speed from Hot Cost Guns, and she has really emerged this weekend. She did well in the first game. The second game, she stepped it up to another level, and here we're seeing that speed and just finesse right there. She slows down, takes her time, and makes her own hole by making them second guess where they should be. Puts up five quick points. And now she's coming around for another scoring pass. Meanwhile, Zombabe is out of the box and approaching the pack as Hot Cross Guns calls it off. But no points for Zombabe and a great call off right there for Guns. Track awareness, AK. She, you could see her uh, turning her head as she came around the track. She was watching for Zombabe to come out of the box. She wanted to deny Zombabe any opportunity to score those points and called off the jam right away. Coming up for the next jam, we have carried away number 42 in the white for the Misfit Militia. And she skates against the Hot Shamali. The jam already begun, the blockers making a slow roll. Finally, they cross the pivot line, the jammers are released. The Hot Shamali makes a play to the inside line. She's up against the two wall in front. She is able to push them far enough ahead to get out of play. They're outside the zone of engagement. They're forced to let her go. She has lead jam, AK. Meanwhile, in the back of the pack, Carrie DeWay was held up by a solid two wall of Royal City blockers. She made her way up to the front right there, had one to contend with, and uh, that blocker lost her edges a little bit. Kim Scar smashian, so the jammer was let out of the pack, but uh, quick scoring pass for Hot Shamale. Four points to go on the board for Royal City, and before Carried away, can get back around to the pack. It is called off, so a 4 nothing jam. High fives for the hot Shamali on her bench. Certainly mission accomplished for her.
Getting ready to line up again. It looks like we've got two in the box for the Militia, one for the Brutleggers. So a three on two advantage in the pack right now for Guelph. Slim, who do we have jamming back there? The Hellcat of Pinar, number 1910, jamming for the Brutleggers. It looks like we have Mad Megs 420 jamming for the Misfit Militia. Here we go. Brutleggers jammer taking down a couple big hits. The second knockdown before she even gets around to turn. And a third time she stands up and right there to drop her is Sarah Fim, number 28 for the Militia. And you look at Sarah Fim, she has got a bead on that jammer. Meanwhile, lead jammer going to Mad Megs, number 420 in the white and camo for the Militia. Nice clearing block up front. Will help Hellcat of Panar get out of there. Loose wheel complementing her by clearing out that blocker. Mad Meg's in there working her left and right and another big hit takes out Hellcat of Panar slim. Sarah Fim doing the damage there. She's bedeviling Hellcat of Panar at the rear of the pack. The jam comes to a close. No more points scored on those passes. The score. Looks like it's only one point apart with 14 minutes remaining, AK. That's right, and this is kind of what we saw yesterday early on with the Militia. They jumped out to an early lead, and then the Bruisers came back slowly just as the Brutleggers are doing right here. Now it's time to see how they respond, how they react. Will they come out and jump ahead, or will they stick to a nickel and dime strategy of quick jams and short points? We have seen teams do it by spoonfuls and achieve victory that way e even this weekend AK and it looks like Brass Brawls has gained lead jammer status although not without physical cost that's right and speaking of physical cost paying it with the jammer star in her helmet for the militia right now is Randy Rollin who is just fighting her way through takes a blocker to the floor and she is out on her initial pass meanwhile right there hitting the back of the pack and speeding through great job by Brass Brawls and she is fired up, and they have taken the lead to much applause here in Guelph. Smiling faces on the bench of Royal City. And looking at this game in quarters, essentially we do play in halves, but we're about just over a quarter through the game, first half of the first half, and uh, evenly matched, of course, Miss, Misfit Mayhem, or Militia, pardon me, came out strong and they've chipped back. So we're seeing a pretty even game and a relatively clean game. Unfortunately for the Militia, they have two in the box to start this jam. Mad Megs and Hot Cross Guns, jammers of the right now. Hot Cross Guns, number 38 in the green, has gained lead jammer status. She's gone off your screen halfway around the track. Meanwhile, the Misfit Militia trying to pick up speed and get that pack away from Hot Cross Guns as she approaches on her scoring pass, AK. That's right, you see those two skaters up front trying to stay together, and they lose her coming around the turn. They were focusing on something else it looked like, and Guns with her blazing speed will shoot out of there on the outside, pick up four quick points and call it off. And you wanna talk about the, uh, the spoonfuls right here. The Brutleggers are doing a great job of getting getting lead, which is very important because that way you can call the jam off. They're getting through, they're getting their quick points and they're calling it off, and they're getting through cleanly, which is very important. You're absolutely correct, AK. It, the one and done is an excellent strategy if you can pull it off consistently. We're looking at a score of 31 to 38 in the Brutlegger's favor, just under 12 minutes remaining. Zombabe jamming right now for the Militia, nine points so far in this game, and it's Hot Shamale with the star for the Brutleggers in the green, being held back by Seraphim, who is early, just really showing dominance in the pack. Two wall up front, fighting with Hot Shamale, Meanwhile, oh, Zombabe taken down around the turn. She was having a hard time. No lead jammer for Hachimale. So she had no pass, no penalty on that one. That means it is open. If Zombabe can get out cleanly, she will get lead jammer. Meanwhile, inside the pack, however, the Hachimale is eligible to score. She needs to pass those white shirts, and she does. She picks up four points right there, and meanwhile draws a major penalty. So Seraphim, who has been very, very important to the pack for the Militia, is headed off to the box for a minute. That is doubly dangerous for the Misfit Militia. As you were saying, AK, not only have they, have they lost a skater on the track, but it's a skater who has had a tremendous weekend. Seraphim throwing big hits all tournament long, playing smart, and uh, unfortunately uh, drawn into a penalty in this case. That's right, and when you lay big hits like that, 
you're bound to pick up penalties for contact. Sometimes an elbow's not right in the exact right place. It can come off the uh, body a little bit, and that can't happen. Legally, you do that, you're going to go to the box. And, uh, you know, outside of the big hitting, one thing that Seraphim has been very good at is positional blocking, just getting in front of that jammer. And when the jammer's trying to sneak by her, that's when she throws the hit. She doesn't go for the big sweeping hits because a lot of times you're going to miss on those attempts. What she does is locks them up and then hits them when she knows she can. Solid contact, certainly, by Sarah Fim. I see, uh, I see some of our friends here on Canuck Derby TV. If you are watching Dames of Thrones on CanuckDerbyTV.com, feel free to use the chat window on the right-hand side. Tell us how we're doing. Put in some comments. I see Blister Sister there. She is a Royal City skater. I'm glad she's watching her team today. And we thank everyone for joining us, whether on Canuck Derby TV or of those who are through the stream on DNN. Thank you for watching. And uh, I tell you, it has been a fun one from a, a spectator point of view. And that's what we do. We spectate, but we commentate. And uh, we have seen some really, really amazing games. We absolutely have, AK. I'd also like to thank AMJ Productions for much of the technical wizardry that helps bring us into your living rooms or wherever you're watching. are ready to go after that official timeout. Two in the box for the Militia and the Brute Leggers will take a knee. Royal City starting things off. And Hellcat up on our sneaking around the inside, but uh, Militia there waiting for her back and forth, back and forth, and she will get out first. Great job by Hellcat up in our to move laterally and keep her guessing and pick lead jammer up slim. Hellcat up in our now coming around. You can see her moving through turns number three. She hits four, she's headed for the pack. It's a fast moving pack. The Misfit Militia want to get away from the Hellcat. Destroyer pushes her to the inside of the oval. She senses the approach of her opposite number and calls off the jam, picking up one point for the Brute Leggers. And that was Rennie Rumble, just a slight correction on that last one for the Militia. No points for her though. Right now we stand at 43 to 31 with 10 minutes on the dot left in this first half of gameplay in game uh, nine, I believe it is. The third and fourth place game, more importantly, of the Dames of Thrones Eastern Roller Derby Association of Canada playoff tournament. And as we are taking an official timeout, sometimes you need to take out, take some time. You know, right now I, I need a breath. It's been an exciting game. It's been an exciting weekend. And when I need a rest, I want to go to my room at the Delta Hotel and Resort. They have been kind enough to put us all up. Uh, Canuck Derby TV up there. You can check them out at deltahotels.com and book your own fantastic stay. Action beginning again. Mad Megs faces Brass Brawls. Both jammers immediately into the thick of things. Mad Megs, number 420 in the white, emerging first. You see her there. She has lead jammer status, but Brass Brawls not far behind. This is a jammer race to reach the pack. It is a fast moving pack. I think, yes, Royal City has slowed the progress of the pack. They want to allow access, but it's for the wrong jammer as Mad Mags arrives first. And a great job right there for number 444. That's Bayonet Betty throwing the positional block in on Brass Brawls, holding her back, allowing their jammer to pick up two points and stopping the Brute Lakers from accruing any in that one. Right now we have a 12-point game in favor of the Brute Lakers. And uh, you know what? Slim, I'm just going to make a prediction. This is going to be close down to the end. I think a lot of these bouts have been this weekend. And yeah, I agree with you, AK. This is going to be another close one. It's certainly a fun one already. And there's still nine minutes remaining in the first half, another half hour period to come. Of course, this next jam starting with Zombabe facing Hot Cross Guns, both of these very speedy jammers. Let us see what unfolds, AK. Great speed to the outside right there. And Zombabe will get in. 
and through first, picking up lead jammer and a great job at the beginning of that jam by the militia to slow it down before the jammers could get out and they got all four blockers out in the track for the jammer engagement. Right now, a two on one blocker matchup out front trying to hold back guns and a great job on the force out there. She does stay up on one foot. Meanwhile, untouched, a five point grand slam for Zombabe. Farrell Merrill clearing for her jammer there, knocks down Destroy her and lures her into a penalty. Also excellent play by the pivot that is the striped helmet cover. Farrell Merrill of the Brute Leggers. Right there, Zombabe getting into a foot race with that last opposing blocker and, and her speed, especially the way she transitions from her, her stride and, and finding her way around the pack into overdrive right there. She just clicks it on with one step, speeds past, calls it off. Uh, Zombabe, very fun to watch. Again, haven't seen as much of her in the second game and here in the third game as we did in the first game where she did a lot of the jamming and uh, she was just dominant in that first game. Speaking of jammers, AK, some usual suspects here. We've got Randy Rowland and the Hot Shamali. And we have a timeout being called by the Misfit Militia. And a stat update, talking about Zombie right there. The defense has done a pretty good job holding her back. She's only got a 1.12 points per jam average. And of course, that's just how many points she gets divided by how many times she's been jamming. Uh, a, a nice, solid, effective points per jam. In most cases, you're gonna see up around a two or a three. Uh, a really strong performance up around four or five. So one is she's doing an okay job, but they're, they're really kind of stymieing her. We should point out also, since we're having a timeout, that each team is allotted three of those timeouts for each 60-minute bout. And they are also given one challenge per half to review things. Right now we've got a point challenge going on. Just reviewing things, making sure it's right. In a close game like this, the officials are doing their due diligence to make sure that no points are missed with points being scored very quickly. A lot of math to be done on the fly. You see the folks in the white shirts there. Those are the non-skating officials. That's the reason there are quite a few of them is they're keeping track of things like penalties and points. Hot Shamali up against a two wall at the front. She's pushing them along with her, hoping to get herself outside the zone of engagement where they'll have to let her go. Unfortunately, she's recycled to the back of the pack. That nice knockdown and the two walls from the militia have been very strong in the penalty deficit. As far as blockers on the track, they have been effective even with two. And lead jammer will go to the militia. They held back the Brutelager jammer long enough for Randy Rowland to get out clean and pick up lead. In the pack, the hot Shamali squeaks through to the inside line. She's now in the free and open spaces. Bayonet Betty off to the box right now, so still two sitting for the militia right now. Randy Rowland held back by a three wall of green skaters, tries to call it off. The ref does not see it, and now she will call it off. She kind of went for the call off and then retracted a little bit, said maybe I can get another point in here. So uh, whether or not they saw it, she took advantage of the fact that it was not called. I do believe, AK, the hands must strike the hips twice, twice. in succession, if not more. I've certainly seen them fluttering in, uh, in amidst all the action. And, it, uh, you know, uh, one of the finer points of Derby watching these skaters is uh, everybody's got their own style of call off. And it's kind of fun as you watch them to pick up, you know, some have this leisurely kind of like light tap, some have the giant hands flailing. But right now, bodies will be flailing as a scrum start gets things going here. Looks like we've got a Is Hellcat that? of Pinar jamming, but out first will be the militia, not lead, no, a major illegal procedure. So a likely a false start, that's the major we often see, and slim. Hellcat Pinar right there being knocked to the outside and coming back in, but she is your lead jammer. Referee Doug Grave issuing the illegal procedure on the Misfit Militia jammer. Now the Hellcat of Pinar. She will approach the pack. The Misfit Militia attempting to pick up speed. However, they've ca uh, the Brute Leggers have captured one of their players. They call that getting a goat. They've captured a Misfit Militia player and are using her to control the speed of the pack and slow things down to allow access for the Hellcat of Pinar, AK. Randy Rowland, even though they had her held back, she is not easily contained. She fought her way through, taking down a blocker, getting back up to the front. Unfortunately, by the time she got back to the front, that two wall was out of play and they had to let Hellcat go. Hellcat sneaking around to the outside right there. Some great speed, but gets held up one on one right now and near out of play. She's let her go for another five point grand slam. The Brute Lagers looking very confident and effective out there with a four on two. 
The Grand Slam, of course, five points for passing all four blockers and the opposing jammer. Oh, a hit there from Destroyer. Knocks down the Hellcat of Pinar. Like we said earlier, she's used to that kind of treatment. She gets right back up again and calls off the jam. Great awareness right there from Destroyer. You know, her and Seraphim, uh, you know, not to point anybody out, but we do that because this is sports. Uh, they have really when they've been in the pack individually have stood out. When they're in the pack together, it's really hard to tell who's doing what because they're, they work so seamlessly. It is extremely dangerous to be caught between those two blockers. And of course, uh, Destroyer considerably greater in stature, especially compared with someone like the Hellcat of Pinar. Absolutely, okay. Over in the penalty box, we've got two seated for the militia. So we will start out with a four on two. And uh, I'm sorry, that's a, a jammer in the box and one blocker. So it'll be a three on four in favor of the Brute Lakers, but a power jam to start things out. Now, when you see a jammer seated in the box, she's still serving her minute. But if you see a jammer or a blocker standing in the box, that means they have less than 10 seconds remaining. So that's something that teams will look for, especially at the beginning of jams, deciding whether or not they want to draw it out or start it quicker. Both of those skaters firmly seated, so they have the better part of a minute to go. Interesting start right there from the Brutleggers. And Brass Brawls is already in the pack, but out of the box and working her way around is Mad Mags, number 420, jamming for the Militia. Brass Brawls pushed to the outside, re-engages with the pack now. Skips through to the inside line. She had to step over the track boundary, but landed fairly. She has lead jam status. That's right. Meanwhile, Mad Mag's working her way out of the pack. She did pick up a minor cut on the way. Not that she could have been lead jammer with Brass Brawls having that honor already. And Brass Brawls on one foot takes that inside line and calls it off, allowing only one point to be scored against her and picking up four on her way to a uh, fantastic finish. Brass Brawls sailing through just shy of the track boundary on one foot, but keeping her balance and, of course, having the presence of mind to also call off the jam right away. And this score, once again, not so far apart, although the Brutleggers seem to be on a bit of a tear. 59 there, score 47 for the Misfit Militia, and three minutes left in the first half, AK. Slim, I gotta tell you, if, if the Militia is going to try and, and, and stop this tear that they're on, they gotta stay out of the box right now with two in the box, one standing, and uh, two on the floor, but oh, hot cross, guns, great speed around the outside, lead jammer going to the brute laggers, and it looks like the militia will get one of their blockers back out of the box, staying just in front of Hot Cross Guns as she comes up on the back of the pack now. Nice hockey stop slide to the outside, cutting back to the inside, almost sneaks through and gets taken down hard, and she will call it off from the floor slim. That was Hot Cross Guns being taken down by the aforementioned Destroyer, although it seems that that might have had a little too much mustard on it. Destroyer heads to the penalty area. Now, the Misfit Militia have taken quite a few penalties in the first half of this bout, AK, but it, to me, it seems like they are skating as though they are unperturbed by this. Could that eventually come around to bite them, do you think, AK? It, indeed, Slim, it can, because one thing you have to worry about in a derby game is if you get any individual get, skater gets seven minutes in the penalty box, they will foul out of the game. And that goes through the entire bout. But back to the action on the track right now. Looks like Hot Shamale is on fire. Out first, lead jammer. But looking to gun her down. Oh! Gets forced to the outside. No pass, no penalty. Oh, no, a major cut being called on Mad Megs, and she will go off to the box. We have a power jam lightning slim. Hot Shamali skates on. She's getting close to the pack now. Tries to cut through to the inside line. Takes a hit from Rennie Rumble. Cuts back around the outside of that two wall from out of bounds. Great maneuver right there. Picks up a quick five point grand slam and we'll find our way back around to a stopped pack. Rumble again, nice hip check. Sending Hachimale outside on the straightaway. And of course, Hachimale has to get back in behind the skater that knocked her out. She could not contain her long enough. Seraphim going down and taking Hachimale with her. It looks like we've got a major low block going to Sarah Femme. So not only 
Will the Militia be without their jammer? They were gonna be without a blocker for less than 10 seconds and another one for a full 60. As you mentioned earlier, AK, players have to be very aware of the number of penalties they're taking. That's right, and not only do they have to worry about the big picture and seven trips to the box, you really have to manage those minor penalties because those will add up too, and when you get that fourth one, go into the box as well. Jam begins again, Hellcat of Pinar cutting through to the inside. She gains lead, Jam. Skater being sent off back to the bench. There was too many skaters on the track for the Militia. Big knockdown right there, Hellcat of Pinar colliding with Rennie Rumble. And her name is becoming synonymous with knockdown in this bout. You see the pack there reorganizing itself. The bootleggers deciding to uh, hold up the progress of the pack by dawdling a little. That allows the Hellcat of Pinar to catch up with them. Meanwhile, Mad Max quickly out of the box and through the pack. She snuck by right there. And that's one of those things you have to be aware of as a jammer, especially coming out of the penalty box, is sneaking through and, and getting out and around without them noticing you came out of the box. Meanwhile, we are noticing that four more points will go up on the board for the Brutelagers right there as it is called off. Another solid jam for the Brutelagers who have extended their lead now 82-47 going into halftime. You are watching the Roller Derby Association of Canada Eastern Regional Championships on Canuck Derby TV. And we thank you for joining us. Now, Slim, going into halftime right now, we're gonna take 10 minute break. Uh, any any last thoughts before we take a break real quick uh, at what happened in the first half? I think what we saw was a misfit militia team that came out very strong but then ran into penalty trouble, but I don't think it was the penalties that were the issue. I think it was the fact that they were ignoring the penalties. They skated like a team that were not two skaters short even when they were. That's right. And they've been effective even with those two skaters out there, but when you're constantly in that position, it will wear you down because endurance is such a big factor in a game like this. All right, so we stand at 82-47 in favor of the home team Royal City Brutleggers. And we've got about nine minutes. We're gonna send it on over to Bob Noxious, who has Professor Rex, coach of the Royal City Roller Girls. Well, I gotta tell you, Professor Rex, this game is so hot, I shed the red sport coat, and I don't do that for just anybody, my friend. Tell me, I tell you, your team is playing very, very well. The defense has been fantastic against the militia. And it's not like you haven't had a good weekend, but it seems like it's coming together. What's changed? I think after the, uh, the tournament started and the first day being done and over with, the skaters that have put the time in to put this tournament on have kind of, the second day have had a bit of a chance to breathe. And uh, seeing as how they had to play late in the day at 2 o'clock instead of early in the morning, it gave them the chance to uh, to rethink what they have to do on the track and just come out and play a good derby. You know, that's a good point because a lot of times people forget that a lot of the people who are playing in the game have put a tournament together and it's very stressful. Now, to, when you go back into the locker room though, what, what are the words of advice? What is it you want to focus on for the second half? I want them to focus on exactly what they've been doing in this first half is uh, staying out of the box, uh, playing our game, which is a very defensive game, um, trying to maintain them at the back of the pack so our jammers push through the front. Our jammers generally don't need front help at the front. They, they're pretty tenacious and uh, they push past pretty well. Um, I think our strength is staying in numbers and staying as a unit. And that's the strength of all our league. We, we help at each other as much as we can. All right, well, I'll let you get back to the girls. I'm gonna go, go talk to them quick. Thank you so much. It's not just about the shorts. It's about inspiring others. It's about having fun and making new friends. It's about getting hit down and getting back up again. It's about being a team. Pivot Star, it's about roller derby.
Welcome back here on Conduct Derby TV, the second half of this third place game here at Dame of Thrones Eastern Regional Roller Derby Association of Canada Tournament. We've got the Guelph, Ontario Brutelager All-Stars going up against the Renegade Derby Dames Misfit Militia. Militia in the white and the Brutelagers in the green. I'm here with Lightning Slim. That is my good friend, AK-40 Ounce. And we are happy to be with you here for the second half of gameplay. 30 minutes left on the clock, 82.47 to start things out. And a good, strong start right there for the Militia. Zombabe, number 26 in the white, picking up lead jammer quickly. Brass Brawls also emerging from the pack. She is in the free and clear as Zombabe approaches. That's right, you see Zombabe sneaking up right there, taking that inside, but a wall of four green blockers. Some penalty trouble for the Militia in the first half. Zombabe sneaks through, gets knocked down, and calls it off as she's falling to the floor. Picks up four points and calls it off just in time so the Brutelagers do not score. This is the start the Misfit Militia wanted. They were behind going into the half, and they want to put together some solid jams to begin this second half, AK. That's right, and they're a team that did start strong in this and other games this weekend. They got a, a very substantial lead right off the bat, and just time and patience, the Brutelagers chipped away and then overtook them, right now leading by 31. Brutelagers taking a knee that will release the jammers immediately. Those jammers, the Hellcat of Pinar and Randy Rowland. The Brute Leggers with a one blocker advantage, but Randy roll in, finding that line, working her way out and around and picking up lead jammer. The Brute Leggers now attempting to control the pack. They are putting up a defensive position as they await the arrival of Randy roll in. Here she comes there. Works her way around the outside, but held up by a two wall and she will call it off right there. No points for the Brute Leggers and one point will go to Randy Rowland and the Militia. Still a four on three right now in favor of the Brute Leggers to start this jam. One in the box for the Militia. And back on the jammer line, Slim, who do we have? Mad Megs and the Hot Shamali. The Hot Shamali in green, skating for the Brute Leggers. Mad Megs in the white for the Militia AK. Scrum start right off the bat, and oh, the Militia will get their jammer out first. Great fight by Mad Megs number 420, but Hot Shamale hot on her tail, coming around the curve right there. You see just a couple strides behind her as they go around turns one and two, approaching the pack into turn three. A slow no pack. Hachimale sneaks her on one foot on the inside. Meanwhile, Mad Max with lead jammer held up. She will work her way around. Did she pass all of them? No, she only picked up three points right there for the Militia and four points going to the Brute Leggers. The hot Shamale just snuck through on the inside line, doing it as good jammers do. She was able to even do it on one skate, keeping her balance as she rounded the track, passes four, picks up four for the Brute Leggers, and that maintains their lead. They are now at a score of 86 to 55 with 26 and a half minutes remaining, AK. Both teams trying to strategically position themselves out in front of the jammers, and now they will move to the pivot line when the pack either splits or crosses that pivot line as a whole, the jammers will be released. A lot of bumping going on there in the pack. Brute Leggers looking to kill some penalty time with one in the box. And as they cross, here come the jammers and it's gonna be hot cross guns in the green, taking that inside line, going to the outside and being stopped right there by Bayonet Betty. Seeing a penalty here to Kim Skarsmashian. She heads to the box, play continues. Zombabe sneaks through to the inside line. She is lead jammer. Nice job by Zombabe right there. Meanwhile, back in the pack, the Militia working a vicious three wall. Great recycling right there. And Hot Cross Guns has been kept up long enough. Zombabe coming around for a grand slam pass. Will she get all five points? She does. Five will go on the scoreboard for the Militia. Lightning Slim. Meanwhile, inside the pack, Hot Cross Guns held up by Rennie Rumble and then just demolished there by Sarah Fim. AK, what is happening? Another big knockdown for Sarah Fim right there. And she is just the angel of destruction that haunts the dreams of the Brute Lakers. Meanwhile, Grand Slam pass for Zombabe right there. And the momentum in this jam definitely in favor of the Militia. Zombabe coming back around to the pack, bumps into Hot Cross Guns and now fighting her way through one-on-one. -on -one. She does get out, but gets knocked down right there. 
And she is going to the box for a major low block. That means we have a power jam. Hot Cross Guns in the pack. Lightning Slim. Hot Cross Guns. She knows she's on the power jam. She looks over, sees her opponent heading to the penalty area. She moves. She sees a three wall in the front of the pack. Can she squeeze through? She is pushed to the outside by Demon Star. Takes another hit from Seraphim. Seraphim continuing to trouble Hot Cross Guns. Sandwiched between Demon Star and Seraphim. But finally, she emerges AK. That's right, great job right there by the Brutelagers doing that gutter ball maneuver, sliding to the outside and letting the pack naturally split as the militia blockers try to keep engaging their jammer. Now we will start this next one with the advantage going to the Brutelagers. They have a power jam. Slim, what do you think we can expect? Well, the Brutelagers maintain a lead still, 86 points to 68, 24 minutes remaining. Brass brawls taking the jammer line for the Brute Leggers. I imagine the Brute Leggers AK will try to form either a knee start or they'll go off to a side conga line to give Brass Brawls a ton of room to skate. That's right, and with, the, I'd say, uh, a large portion of the minute left in the box for the Militia Jammer, that Zombabe sitting there, uh, she will uh, try and capitalize. Of course, the Brute Leggers want to keep it slow and make it a lot easier for their jammer to get back around. And the Militia, of course, will be trying to counter that by getting them to speed their pace up. Right now in the center of the oval, you see the, uh, the officials huddling together. There seems to be a discussion about uh, timekeeping or penalty tracking. They're looking at the penalty board. And it now over in the penalty box, you see 71 Lady Gorgeous in the green skating for Royal City. And of course, the jammer, Zombabe, for the Misfit Militia. Her being there in that chair with the star on it is what's giving the Brutleggers a power jam, AK. Indeed, and we were talking about seven trips to the box, meaning a foul out. Now coming into the second half, three, three big blockers for the Militia were sitting on four major penalties already. Damon Star, Seraphim, and Destroy Her. All powerhouses in the pack, all sitting on four trips to the box. Three more and they will be out of the game. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, only eight box trips total in the first half for the Brutleggers. The Brutleggers skating extremely clean in that first half and that is what has put them in the lead. Looks like Lady Gorgess has been released from the box. The penalty overturned. Interesting turn of events here and a big advantage right now for the Brutleggers. Four on four in the pack and a power jam right now as they split. Here comes the jammer. It's going to be Brass Brawls, number one fourth. Sneaking through on the inside. Great fight right there. Throwing a little bit of a shoulder to get herself some leverage and picking up lead jammer. Working her way around the track right there. Great speed from her, but she's taking her time. You know, nice stride, but very patient. As you predicted, AK, uh, the Brute Leggers using pack control, controlling the speed there. Reforming the pack because they want it there and accessible for Lady Gorgeous. As she comes around the track, you see her there again. Another five point grand slam for Brass Brawls. Two very quick scoring passes, 10 points already on this power jam. Out of the box comes Zombabe right into the pack. They know she's coming and a shoulder is there to greet her. A pile up going into the turn, clears a path out for Zombabe finishing her initial pass out of the penalty box. But Brass Brawls will call it off as she clears the pack on a scoring pass and she will get four more points. So that is a 14-0 jam in favor of Royal City. Militia, see their bench right there. A little frustrated right now, but you don't see them getting angry or anything. They look focused, they're discussing things. Down right now, 68 to 100 with 22.40 left to play, Slim. Late penalty on the play, Rennie Rumble sits down for the Militia. They are now one short as this jam begins. The Hellcat of Pinar trying to push away to the front, but it is Mad Mags you see there up against a two wall at the front colliding with the Archbitch of Slamtabury. You see the Guelph players stretching out their arms. They're attempting a bridge to create a larger zone of engagement. Meanwhile, Mad Mags comes around again and approaches the pack on a scoring run. Hellcat AK. of Pinar has cleared the pack. Thank you, Slim. And we've got one going to the box for Royal City, so it'll be a three-on-three -three in the pack right now. And Mad Mags fighting valiantly past Lady Gorgeous. She will pick up all four points and keep on going. A late call off right there. She picked up four points, but 
took her time calling it off and two points will go up on the board for the Hellcat Planar. And if they want to win this game, they have to be very aware of where the opposing jammer is, not to allow such things. Certainly the second jammer can still do plenty of damage. The Hellcat of Pinar picking up two points there. The score 102 to 72. That is in the Brutlegger's favor. 21 and a half minutes remaining. You hear a shout from the crowd there. Obviously some hometown faithful here for the Brutleggers in the Sleeman Center in beautiful Guelph today. All right. Here we go with the next jam quickly around the outside for a strum start. We've got the Hot Shamali with lead jammer. That's going to be 16 out of 31 lead jammers for Royal City. Misfit Militia only 12 out of said 30. Randy Rowland in the free and clear also, but it is the Hot Shamali with lead calling off the jam immediately after grabbing her points. You see her skate back to her bench, high fives, mission accomplished, AK. That's right, they did a great job of stretching that pack out and a credit going to Hot Shamali right there. She saw her lines ahead of time and just weaved in and out as the pack was getting spread out by her uh, blockers and she just went through with these, called it off with style and headed to the box with a smile. Or bench, I'm sorry, not the box. Speaking of the box, there is one in the box for Royal City. Four on three and a quick knee start for the Militia, Lightning Slim. Brass Brawls faces Randy Rowland. Oh, Brass Brawls throws a hit immediately on Randy Rowland and they get involved in a mosh pit in the center of the pack. Lady Gorgeous tries to hold up Randy Rowland, knocks her down, goes to the box on a penalty. Gender Bender cannot contain Randy Rowland. She is lead. Nice job by Randy Rowland right there. And we have seen the fight in her all weekend. Meanwhile, in the pack, Lady Gorgeous throwing a huge block. The box is full, so she will have to remain on the track. No, she's going to pick up another penalty. And meanwhile, Randy Rowland jumping the inside line. They were holding back brass brawls. We're the pack for the militia, and she just cleared all of them in a single skip. You see there, folks, uh, bodies flying around like bowling pins and being scattered and the call off here as Randy Rollins turns to the referee and makes sure that he sees her calling off that jam. Indeed she does. She picks up four points right there for a total of 34 points thus far for Randy Rollin of the Militia. Looking over at the penalty box, we've got two in the box for the Brute Leggers and one for the Militia. And it looked like Lady Gorgeous picked up two minutes on two separate penalties, so she could be there for 120 seconds. All blockers crammed against the jammer line there. There you see a shot of Lady Gorgeous having a chat on the penalty bench. That is unfortunately for her team all she can do at this point in time. And the jam begins, AK. Militia on Anita to start things out, and their jammer fighting hard, gets knocked to the inside and forced to cut, and she will be going to the box, so we have a power jam right now for the Brutleggers, and Hot Shamale clearing past those blockers. They had to let her go, and lead jammer will go to the Brutleggers as the pack reforms. You see there, the penalty box is now full for the Misfit Militia. We've seen this before in this particular bout. They've run into penalty trouble, and there they go again, AK. That's right, Hachimale meanwhile running into the pack and the pack doing their best to hold her back but only two of them to try and contain her. She does a good job keeping it going and picks up five points, a grand slam on the power jam. The Brute Leggers forcing holes to open in the track. They want room for the Hachimale. She just sailed through one of them you see there and another penalty coming to the militia. The penalty bus is full, one of their skaters is standing. Because she is standing, Rennie Rumble will be allowed to sit. That's right. Meanwhile, back on the track, a three on one, and all you really got to do is just contain her. They knocked her down, and it's a clear path right there. Hot Shamale untouched for another five point scoring pass. 20 points already being put up in this power jam by number B4. A two wall up front for the Misfit Militia. It's all they've got to offer, and they try to hold up the Hot Shamali, throwing a big hit there, but does not take her off her skates. The Hot Shamali continues to skate as Mad Mags returns from the penalty box, but does not pick up any points, does not arrive in time. AK. That's right, finishing her initial pass right there, so no points awarded. We'll start this next jam out with a three on two in favor of the militia in the pack. You see them right there lined up and ready to go. 
A little bird in my ear telling me the hot Shamali has 28 points in the second half of this contest alone. She is on fire today. That's right. She's had uh, mixed success so far this tournament, but she has really turned it on. Looks like it's going to be Zombabe going up against Brass Brawls. Zombabe looking for a line on the outside. Nice juke to the inside. And lead jammer will go to number 26 and the Militia. Meanwhile, at the back of the pack, Brass Brawls having severe trouble with Sarah Fim pushing her to the outside. Oh, and then a repeat hit to the inside. Sarah Fim is creating havoc inside the pack for the Militia. Mean, AK. Meanwhile, while all that was going on, Zombabe just flew around and picked up a quick grand slam for the Militia. Brass Brawls being held up in the front and uh, not wanting to go 20 feet out and pick up a penalty. The blocker yielded, but here comes Zombabe again on another scoring pass. Four points will go up for the Militia and she will call it off there. And as she's headed back to the bench, we look at the scoreboard, 126 to 90. 36 points of difference with 16, 25 left to play in this second half. Slim. Zombeb has 36 points in this game, doing heavy lifting on that jam, but not just Zombeb working hard there. Sarah Fim throwing some heavy hits, and that's what you like to see is offense and defense operating in concert, AK. And when I see that, you know what I say? Holy crap! And that reminds me to thank, holy crap, the world's most amazing breakfast cereal made in paradise on the sunshiny coast of British Columbia with all natural ingredients. Find out more at holycrap.ca. We'd also let send a shout out to Rollerbug.com, founded back in 2005. Derby owned and operated ever since. Rollerbug was the first of Canadians, first of the Canadian roller skate shops. They are located in Toronto. But if you want to find them on the web, you can check them out at Rollerbug.com. And don't forget to use coupon code THRONE. That's T H R O N E for 15% discount. Headed back to the action, Lightning Slim. What do we got lined up? Zombabe faces Hot Cross Guns. And we await the whistle. I believe the first whistle has blown and we are looking at a very slow start. That's right. A three on three pack right now and everybody kind of looking around. They're trying to spread it out, maybe kill some of that time. And the jammers are somehow released. I'm not quite sure why they did that. But regardless, they did and here they come. Hot Cross Guns fighting a two wall up front, looking for a little bit of room, but Randy Rowland rolls around the outside and picks up lead jammer. Randy Rowland thus far has averaged 4.46 points per jam coming into this one. And you can see why she has had such success with that speed right there. It gets called off as she gets into the pack and a pile of bodies litters the floor. Penalties are gonna come flying. Somebody's going to the box. I see a low block penalty coming to Forza here. She is, uh, of course, expressing dismay about that. And uh, I believe it was a low block. And Farrell Merrill will join her, except no room at the end. The penalty box is full. You see her skate away there because there is no room. She will have to rejoin the pack for the next jam in order to be available to serve her penalty at the earliest available opportunity, AK. That's right, you see that skater out there pivoting, going back to the bench so she can stay on the floor. And a quick start from the Militia. It's gonna be Mad Megs jamming for them up against Hot Shamale and Mad Megs out first. Lead jammer for the Misfit Militia. The Hot Shamale having some trouble with Sarah Fim, as have many jammers during this tournament. And now she's up against a front wall at the front of the pack. Meanwhile, Mad Mags is sailing on through. You see her, she's through the pack there. A grand slam, five points for Mad Mags AK. That's right, picking up all five points for the three on the floor, the one in the box, and the jammer lap right there. A hit and missed on Hot Shamale, and she is clear on her initial pass. But here comes Mad Mags bobbing and weaving her way through, and she has shown amazing lateral movement. A little burst of speed at the end, hands to the hips, calls it quits, and four will go up on the board for the Militia. AK, I heard you mention a jammer lap point. Perhaps you could tell the folks how that works. How what works? A jammer lap point, sir. Yes, if you lap the opposing jammer, you get an additional point for it. And that is not contingent necessarily on them being in the pack. There are times, and I have seen this before, where a jammer will be held up so much that the opposing jammer will lap her twice in a scoring pass and even accrue six points. It's a rare occurrence, but you do see it occasionally. We have not seen it this weekend, though. Looks like we have a timeout 
for the Brute Leggers. So Guelph will take some time to talk some strategy. A little momentum going the way of the Militia in these last few jams. We stand right now at 126 to 99 here at the Dames of Thrones tournament. of us here at Canuck Derby TV would like to give a big thanks to Delta Hotels and Resorts here in Guelph, Ontario for putting up with us and for putting us up as well. For a great stay of your own, visit Delta Hotels and Resorts at deltahotels.com and I can attest, uh, lovely, lovely hotel, fantastic support staff and I'm not just saying that they have been anything we've needed. They have said, okay, yeah, we'll be there in a second and they'll bring it right up to the room and uh, lovely accommodations. You see there the penalty box, the bootleggers skating too short. That is Farrell, Merrill, and Forza. They will be without a pivot and without another blocker. So a four on two start, and the militia will go for the quick start, taking a knee to get things going here. And uh, Slim, who can you tell me is back behind the jammer line? Randy Rowland and Hot Cross Guns. Randy Rowland for the Misfit of Militia, Hot Cross Guns for the Brute Leggers. As Randy Rowland approaches the pack, you see her there. She's being held up by Goodbye Kitty and the Archbitch of Slamterbury, but she is gone. However, not lead jammer. That's right, so it is still possible for the Brute Leggers to get it, but she's got to get past Demon Star and a couple of other blockers, and she does find her way onto the inside, and lead jammer is awarded to Hot Cross Guns. But already Randy Rowland in the pack and doing damage on the scoreboard right there. Working around that last blocker. Goodbye, Kitty. She says goodbye to her. Puts four up on the board. And it looks like Hot Cross Guns going to try to put some points up of her own. Hot Cross Guns perhaps initially unaware that Randy Rowland was scoring and then making the decision on the track to trade point for point. That's right. And a slow call off right there means two more points will go up on the board for the Militia. So that's going to be six points to two in favor of the ladies from Alliston. You see Professor Rex in that orange shirt directing traffic there on the Royal City bench. Royal City girls standing in front of the bench mostly, getting ready to go for that next jam as we notice the militia on the other side though sitting primarily. It looks like they're just getting ready to go so they can jump out there as soon as the jam starts. And this jam will start right away with the bootleggers taking a knee slim. Zombabe faces the Hellcat of Pinar, like you said, with the knee start. Things begin immediately. The Hellcat taking some hits there. Takes a hit from Destroyer. Does not knock her off her skates. She races to the front of the pack. She has one to beat. And outside the zone of engagement, 20 feet. They're forced to let her go. Hellcat of Pinar, lead jammer, AK. That's right. Nice job by Hellcat of Pinar right there. Spacing it out. And uh, when, you, when you're forcing that 20 feet, what you want to do is not have them engage you. Give them as much room as possible before they can engage. Zombabe out of the pack right there for the militia on her initial pass. Meanwhile, Slim, what do we have going on up front? Inside the pack, the Hellcat of Pinar passes a last couple of skaters from the militia and calls off the jam. Tidy work there by the Hellcat of Pinar in uh, maintaining the lead of the Brute Leggers, AK. And again, you see the bench right there. A lot of smiles going on. They're feeling pretty loose, it looks like. You know, of course, the intensity you see in Professor Rex's eyes as he is uh, trying to play chess with humans that uh, have a tendency to do their own thing. And uh, they're doing their thing right now to the tune of 133 to 105. Slim, what do we got going in this jam? Mad Megs for the Militia, the Hot Shamali for the Brutleggers. The Hot Shamali, you see her there at the front of the pack up against a two wall, Sarah Fim. Blocking effectively has she's done. Meanwhile, sneaking out front, there's Mad Max. She has lead, AK. Nice job by Mad Max. Again, the whole pack focusing on Hot Shamale, and Mad Max is just so good at being stealthy, at, at moving back and forth. Oh, cannot sneak by a hit right there, and we have a skater down on the track, so the jam will be called for injury. 
And it looks like Mad Megs is getting a major low block, so she will be sent to the box. We'll start out on a power jam, but right now the EMT is headed over to turn one. It's not just about the shorts. It's about inspiring others. It's about having fun and making new friends. It's about getting hit down and getting back up again. It's about being a team. Pivot Star, it's about roller derby. He is in a big round of applause as both coaches help her off the track. The EMTs will take a look at her and since she's back up, we're, uh, that's, that's a good sign, Slim. I should also point out, AK, over on the penalty bench that one of those concerned faces was, of course, Mad Mags. No, uh, no intent on her part to do any harm to Forza, and uh, I'm sure she's just as pleased as anyone that Forza um, is being attended to and seems to be able to move under her own power, AK. That's right. Back to the Brute Lager's bench right there. You see them getting ready for this next one. It'll be a four on four in the pack, but it is a power jam, so the Brute Lagers will start things up, and they are going to send one of their deadliest weapons out there to jam, Slim. That is the Hellcat of Panar. You see her jiving and juking her way through the pack up against the two wall there. Finally, outside the zone of engagement, they get to let her go. She is lead and she rockets around the track, AK. Great job by the Brute Lagers pack to hold back, carried away, and, and force the 20 feet on those blockers up front, and carried away being again contained in the back as the pack splits, and they're gonna have to let her go or face the whistles of the referees. They do let her go, and that's a five-point grand slam pass on the power jam for the Hellcat of Panar. You see there, of course, carried away, still captured by the Brute Leggers. Attempts to throw a hit on the Hellcat of Pinar, but the Hellcat sails on by another Grand Slam. That's right, and what the militia needs to do right now is get back there and free their blocker up, or at least engage and try and get a wall put together. They're all fighting with each other in the pack, and Hellcat of Pinar nearly untouched gets through with another five-point Grand Slam, but watch out. Here comes Mad Max out of the box, and she is held up up front by Lady Gorgeous. Great positioning from number 71 on that outside line slim. The Hellcat of Panar now has 64 points in this bout and is looking for more. There go a couple more. She has been super effective in this role. You see her skating with a big smile on her face, and she's not done yet, AK. The jam referee, Mad Mags looking like she was confused as, as though she was sent to the box. The jam ref was trying to tell her to come back. She does get back in time, picks up four points. Meanwhile, though, Hellcat of Panar picking up four points as well, and she will call it off before Mags can get back around and score points. Right there we see the uh, the bench, Mad Megs, obviously a little frustrated, a couple trips to the box and, uh, and it confusing, she thought she was going to the box there. What I think probably happened in what most cases does happen was the blocker that was next to her was being called off and she thought it was her. You know, she might be a little bit paranoid about some penalties right now, Slim. 24 points on that jam for the Hellcat of Panar and that brings her to over 70 points total in this bout. And you see Professor Rex, he's probably feeling good about her performance, but uh, he's uh, put his best poker face on, as you can see. He's, uh, he's, he's thinking about uh, winning this game, no doubt. Absolutely. There's a lot to be said for a, a hosting team doing well in a tournament because it takes a lot of effort to put on an event like this, and hosting teams often do, are not uh, as successful when it comes to the gameplay, but they have done it all this weekend. On your screen there, you see Hot Cross Guns wearing that Star Jammer helmet cover. She's talking to Goodbye Kitty and Loose Wheel talking about the jam to come, no doubt. Also in the top corner, our good friend Cranky Pants. Cranky Pants with a uh, cranky stomach right now, unfortunately. We're glad to have him, though, and we see Hot Cross Guns again talking strategy. Meanwhile, over on the bench, a, a very sedate uh, Misfit Militia. The Misfit Militia currently behind in this contest, trying to keep emotions under control. There's the third team, Team Zebra, of course. Randy Rowland, uh, not sedate at all, just uh, getting loose, it appears, for this next jam. With 40 points already on the board, uh, she is definitely feeling the groove in this game. 
Randy Rollin seemingly tireless in this tournament. She's put up a good number of points for her team throughout it and throughout has also maintained this sort of sunny demeanor with, with a little bit of uh, dancing on the jammer line. And we see once again the brute leggers there. Farrell Merrill, tallest there, has uh, joined the discussion. <laughs> We're back to Randy Rollin. That's right. And uh, not only besi besides scoring points, she's also done a great job picking up lead jammer right around 60% in this game. But right now the differential is the big story. We're looking at eight minutes to go in this second half. And there's a third place trophy on the line right here. And of course, bragging rights. And it's going to take 45 points, 46 points for the militia to win and, and kind of solidify what they came here to do was you know, coming in as dark horses, what they did was blow it up in the first game. Right there, you see the trophies uh, over by the uh, the soundboard awaiting their presentation after the championship. deadly. Right there you see the misfit militia sitting on the bench back there and, and, and that's been their spot all weekend. They've been in that bench and they've had success from that bench. A lot of success on the track. Uh, the biggest victory of the weekend of course belonging to the misfit militia about 300 points plus in their first game against the GTAR G Stars way back when at uh, 10 15 yesterday morning which feels oh so very long ago there's been so much derby crammed into the time in between ak and it looks like we're ready to start again what's happening now all right quick knee start up front from the brute leggers and a nice step on the inside hot cross guns is your lead jammer for guelph randy Rowland, although right behind her coming out of the pack quickly on her initial pass slim randy Rowland. Certainly not tired from dancing, puts in a chase, but it is Hot Cross Guns you see there diving into the pack. She calls it off immediately. Randy Rowland unable to steal any points on the back end, and Hot Cross Guns puts up four. That's right, and it's not just speed, but it's, it's how she skates the track. She did a great job coming around that inside line and circuiting out to the outside, giving her the momentum to take that outside lane right there, around the pack, and call it off quickly. Much discussion in the derby community. I've heard many uh, a late night argument among skaters. It's a trapezoid. No, you must skate from the inside to the outside. There are various strategies employed to get the most room out of this track. And the next jam has begun, AK. That's right. Everybody up on their skates to start this one off. Looks like we've got a four on three in favor of the militia right now with one in the box for the Brute Leggers with less than 10 seconds. And here comes Lady Gorgeous out of the box. And the jammers are going to be released. She'll be right behind them, though. And it is jamming for the Militia. Zombabe up against Hot Shamali. Zombabe sneaks through on the inside, picks up lead jammer slim. Hot Shamali troubled by Rennie Rumble. Back of the pack. She is all the way at the back and must begin again to move force her way into the pack. Meanwhile, Zombabe has come around. She is engaged with the pack. Zombabe cuts through the middle on her scoring run, goes inside, puts up a five point natural grand slam. No assist from penalties there. The Hachimali also breaks free, AK. Great job by Hachimali fighting through right there. Dead Destroyer throwing a solid hip check on her right before she got out of the pack, but she stayed up and it's all about body positioning when you're taking hits like that, going fast. Two more points will go up on the board for Zombib before she calls it off on her way to the floor. Zero points for the Brute Leggers. Right now we stand at 161 in favor of the home team Royal City ladies to 119 for the skaters from Alliston. And that is just six minutes left on the clock, down to the single digits. And right now, Randy Rowland will face the Hellcat of Pinar. The team's taking a knee. 
There's the whistle of AK. Misfit Militia taking a knee to start things out. They know that if they're gonna close that gap with five and a half minutes left, they have to get out there and get skating. Not making it easy for him though. The captain, Hellcat Apanar, picking up lead jammer right now, and that is a crucial lead jam, but hot on her tail is Randy Rollin. Hellcat Apanar, very smart jammer though. She gets in there and she's calling it off. Looks like one point was scored per team, so essentially it is a 0-0 jam. Well, it's a 1-1 jam, technically. But uh, playing to the advantage of the Royal City Girls because they just took some time off the clock and, and, and no difference was made in the score. At this point right now, the clock is Royal City's friend, although I should point out the tenacity of Randy Rowland to stick in there and gain that point for her team. As we set up again, Brass Brawls will face Mad Megs. Militia again wanting to get things started, give their jammer an opportunity to get out, but she is being held fast on the inside. Finds a little bit of room, almost gets out, gets hit hard, and Mad Megs is going to the box again. She picked up a cut, and that's her fourth minor. Ooh, fatal mistake, lead jammer right there, going to Brass Brawls, but a fatal mistake for the uh, the Misfit Militia, you do never want to send your jammer out with three minors. I don't know if they didn't catch it or if she picked one up before she got that cut. But wow, that is a huge power jam right now for Royal City. Brass Brawl skating through, points on the board. Doug Gray with his arm in the air. And Kim Skarsmashian heads to the penalty area as Brass Brawls approaches the pack once again. Full pack of blockers for the Militia, only three out there for the bootleggers, and as she gets knocked into the inside, Brass Brawls will call it off. No points, of course, for Mad Megs on that last jam, and you see Rennie Rumble headed to the back to the bench right there. A lot going on in the benches, and you have to imagine, like, the, the tension and the emotion has is, is, is gotta be pretty high right now uh, for both teams, the Militia wanting to do something to, to break out of this this deficit right now. And of course the bootleggers just have to hold fast and, and, and not make any big mistakes. Slim. Late penalty on the play. Destroy her, heads to the penalty area. So the militia, another skater short. That's two, including their jammer. This will begin as a power jam for Hot Cross Guns, AK. Mad Meg's 17 jams has been shut down. Less than two points per jam which respectable because it's not the easiest thing to do, but that's not what we expect out of her. But again, we've come to expect a lot out of a, a, a three month skater. You know, she picks up lead jammer right there, but she's got a lot of real estate to make up because Hot Cross Guns is halfway across the track. So Megs will call it off, take advantage of the time. And with two and a half left, still 46 points to make up slim. I should point out that in that previous jam, throwing a nice big hit was Forsa, obviously recovered from her injury before, maybe just a little shaken up. She would, have, of course, according to the rules, have to sit out the next three jams, has done so, and there she is now, back in the action on her bench, talking to Hot Cross Guns. So as we get ready, with just over two minutes left to play, we could have one, maybe two jams left. It's gonna be Zombabe taking on the Hellcat of Pinar. A three on two pack advantage going to Royal City, but Zombe breaking out first and a huge takedown back in the pack. Hellcat of Pinar springs right back up though, lightning slim. Hellcat of Pinar forcing her way to the outside. She breaks through the pack, but Zombabe has come around on a scoring run. She is taken down by Kim Skarsmashi and, and she is down on the track, she may be injured. Going down hard and, uh, you know, of course, big thanks to the EMTs out this weekend. We could not do it without them. This is, you know, it, it's such a rough sport and it's especially hard to see skaters go down because not only do these skaters, you know, work together and you know they compete against each other on a relatively regular basis but a lot of these skaters go here there and everywhere and help each other out it is a community of skaters so when one of us goes down all of us take a knee in honor in you know solidarity concerned faces on the bench of the misfits militia there and there you see the skaters taking a knee zombie back on her wheels that is a start and she is uh, under the care of the emts now that's right, holding her knees, not sure if that's just to brace herself 
or just because it's a little sore, but uh, hard to keep a zombie down. You got to take the head off. All right. She looks all right. The EMTs have uh, have left her, and she's just going to catch her breath. And uh, tough to lose her, especially in a jam where she was uh, really getting something going right there. 46 points of difference with 141 left to play, and we are ready to go, Slim. We begin again. Mad Mags with a quick lead jam. There she goes. She's facing the Hellcat of Pinar, who is hit there by Rennie Rumble as Mad Mags comes around again, AK. Nice job, huge knockdown right there. Seraphim sliding from the inside to the out, catching help Cat of Pinar. Great timing on that block from number 28. Meanwhile, their jammer will get through. Five points will go on the board for Mad Max. Laser precise hits from Seraphim, although this one will earn her a trip to the box. Round she comes as Mad Mags continues to skate. She is trying to keep up with a very fast moving pack. And a pack that has really spread out right there. Two skaters try to stop her. One of them going to the floor. She rolls off of her, calls it off after she picks up her four points. And we will have time, Slim, for one more jam in this one. Right now, 166 of 129 in favor of the Royal City Brutleggers. I think they have to be uh, pretty pleased with where they're sitting right now with just over 30 seconds remaining. They've put out Hot Cross Guns, who's had some great success in, uh, in this particular bout, she's come way out. Randy Rowland, also a successful jammer for her team, and here we go, AK. Nice speed around the outside, but on the inside, first is Hot Cross Gun, she is lead jammer, and Randy Rowland picked up, again, fourth minor penalty for a forearm. That's two huge jams right at the end, where the jammers went out with three minors. You know, th this has been a... Uh, a big coming out tournament for them. Meanwhile, five points being scored by Hot Cross Guns as the period time has run out. We will go by the jam time. Hot Cross Guns, a jammer at heart to the end. She sees no time left on the clock, but decides she's going for points. She has a fever for them. A fever for the flavor of a scoreboard deficit. Oh my God, another five point pass right there. And you know what? Uh, a lot of times you see teams just call this, but teams are aware that rankings are affected by the score in this tournament so they're going to try and take advantage and I think Hot Cross Guns just uh, might, might be looking to pad her stats a little bit she was getting up around 100 so who knows what she was looking to do this this bout ends at the pleasure of Hot Cross Guns and it is her pleasure to skate indeed she's had a lot of chance to skate but why not get a little bit more in 43 seconds remaining on the Jam clock, nice cut inside, outside right there. She's being hit, forced to the outside, and she will finally call it off. And that's official, four more points up on the board. But those just icing on the cake. 190 to 129, and you see the celebration right there of the Royal City Roller Girls. Bunched up and getting their chant on. Congratulations to them. Fans headed over to the track. Slim, what a game. A third place finish for the Brute Leggers. They must be happy with this. They were in danger of being squeezed out of their own hosting tournament. So happy faces there as they take a victory lap. Indeed, and a great performance all weekend. Falling just short of Forest City, but coming back and beating a militia team that nobody really knew what to expect from them coming in, but just they showed up large. And, and you just imagine how great it's got to feel to be those ladies in green right now. And of course, consolation lap and a great effort. And, and seriously, way to put yourself on the map, militia. That was a, an amazing performance all the way through. And, and there are some names that are going to be remembered and spread throughout the land that are wearing white right now. Absolutely excellent skating from the Misfit Militia, defeated in the end perhaps by uh, some coaching errors that placed their jammers in the penalty area, but the skaters left everything on the track. Another name known throughout the land will be the Hellcat of Pinar. Indeed, and you see her right there holding the flag, the banner bearer for the team. 74 points for her, 5.84 points per jam for the Hellcat of Pinar. 
just a, a great performance today, and, and she was she was good in the earlier games, but just really broke out today. And was certainly ably assisted by the hot Shamali and hot cross guns, the jammers of the bootleggers, saving the best for last, really, AK. That's right, and you can't say enough about the blockers as well. Uh, Farrell Merrill, Lady Gorgeous, and the rest of them just doing a great job of, of controlling the pack. And, and the two big things that I think we can take away from this game, Slim, are that uh, experience really showed for the Royal City ladies, not only in coaching, but in, in their play. Uh, penalty box was an issue all the way, all, going back to the, the early part, uh, about halfway through the first half for the militia. They were in the box a lot, a lot of four on twos in favor of the bootleggers, and uh, they played clean, they played smart, and they just played consistent, and that paid off in the end. That has been the third, fourth place game for Dames of Thrones. That is the Roller Derby Association of Canada Eastern Regional Tournament. I'm Lightning Slim. He is AK-40 ounce. We have the championship game to come. Do not go anywhere. If you are watching us Ooh. on Canuck Derby TV, you will not be disappointed by what is about to transpire. That's right. We've got the Forest City All-Stars up against Toronto's Bay Street Bruisers for the championship. Those two teams already locked in their trip to the national championship, but only one can be crowned the queen at the Dames of Thrones. <laughs> 